Shalom. All praises, glories, and honors to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashim, Machak Dash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who have taught me this truth, as well as men of like mind. Shalom wa chasad to the elect of the nation of Israel, whom I so called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and Israelite foreigners of the seed line of, of your forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom are scattered here in America, which is Babylon the Great, and abroad. To you I say, Shalom, and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shabbat This lesson is edifying. Now, this is going to be part two of. The last lesson I had done entitled, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the heavenly father, Yahweh, by Shem Shai. And we had read the book of Sirach, chapter 39, verse 26. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of grape, of the grape and oil and clothing and the last principal things in which we had went into and linked them with the scriptures were water and fire and today we will do iron salt and flour of wheat all right and then in part three, we'll do honey, milk, and the blood of grapes, of the grape, and the oil, and clothing. So now, again, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 39, verse 26. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat. Now, the principal things... These principal things are first and foremost of the scriptures. Because the scriptures are likened unto all of these things. And the last one was what? Iron. So let's go to the, Proverbs, the book of Proverbs chapter 9. Excuse me, 27. Verse 17. Iron sharpeneth iron. Iron sharpeneth iron. And each and every brother in the ministry of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, in the body of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, are likened unto iron. And iron, each brother sharpeneth iron, each other brother. So a man sharpeneth the countenance. And what is a countenance? A countenance is a facial expression, the appearance, how you look, and how someone feels will be shown on how they look. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. A brother might be sad. A brother might be going through a lot of hard times, depressed, fighting demons. But then another brother, which is likened unto iron, as the scriptures is likened unto, Sharpens him, sharpens him up, builds him back up through the comfort of the scriptures, reassures him that everything is going to be okay. Bless him in the names of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So, iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. This is the book of Hebrews. Chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh is quick and powerful 
and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And we understand that a two-edged sword is made up of what? Naturally, iron. But in a spiritual sense, the words of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh through Son Yahweh Shai, being likened unto a two-edged a, a two-edged sword itself is sharper than any other. Meaning that it's sharper than any other philosophies out there in the world. And it is likened unto a two-edged sword because it can cut the bearer and it could also more so cut the receiver. Let's read that again. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. For the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is quick. Quick meaning that it has life. It quickens us. It gives us life. And powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Sharper than any other philosophy. Sharper than Hinduism, Buddhism. And most worshipped of them all, Christianity. Islam, the list goes on, piercing even to dividing asunder of soul and spirit. The word asunder means to split in half. So these words, they spiritually split these other philosophies in half. It spiritually splits the souls of the unrighteous in half, asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrows. The spiritual joints and marrows. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Because through these scriptures are the men of the Lord able to discern the right from the wrong. Are able to discern the intent of the heart, of the mind, of, the, of an individual. Through their actions, through the things they say. So let's go to the second one, salt. Let's go to the book of Colossians. Chapter 4, verse 6. So the scriptures are also like none to salt. And here is the proof, Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. What does that salt represent? That salt represents the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures. That ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Because the scripture teaches us how to walk in wisdom to them that are without. How to conduct ourselves amongst people in the world amongst your family amongst your, your job environment when you're going to the store wherever have you it teaches us <clears throat> how to walk in wisdom to them that are without teaching us how to speak with them amongst them and that is by way of the scriptures that your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. And as we had read in the book of Sirach 39 and 26, salt is one of the principal things for the whole use of a man's life. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 2, verse 13. And this is in the law. And every oblation of thy meat offering shalt thou season with salt. And right now, we can't offer up physical meat up to the heavenly for the Yahweh through Son Yahweh Shai in this man's kingdom. No. Rather, we offer up spiritual sacrifices. 
and we ought to offer up our spiritual sacrifices with salt. Meaning, by way of conducting ourselves, living our lives according to the scriptures, being obedient, for obedience, as it is written, is better than sacrifice. And we are ourselves spiritual sacrifices unto the heavenly Father, Yahweh through Son, Yahweh Shai. Now let's prove that and come back to the book of Le Leviticus. This is the book of Romans. Excuse me. This is the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. And as we had just read in the law, it has to be offered up with what? Salt. We have the sacrifice of the lips. And as we had just read in the book of Colossians, chapter 4, verse 6, let your speech be also a grace seasoned with salt, seasoned with the scriptures, with the principles of the scriptures, so that we may know how we ought to answer every man. For in so doing, we will walk in wisdom to them that are without. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, which means separate, acceptable unto Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh, unto Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai. Excuse me. A little excited, man. <laughs> acceptable. And that is a key word, acceptable. Now, what does the word acceptable mean? Let's find out. Acceptable, capable, or worthy of being accepted. Welcoming, pleasing, pleasing. I love that word, pleasing. Pleasing. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, which means separate, acceptable, pleasing unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, which is your reasonable service. <clears throat> And it is our reasonable service to offer up our bodies as living sacrifice unto the heavenly Father, Yahweh, through Son, Yahweh Shai. Now let's go back to the book of Levitic Leviticus, chapter 2, verse 13. And every oblation of thy meat offering shalt thou season with salt. Neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy power to be lacking from, from thy meat offering. With all thine offerings thou shalt offer salt. So every spiritual sacrifice that we offer up, it must be seasoned with the salt of the scriptures. We must live our lives according to the principles, according to the guidelines of the scriptures. For in so doing, we offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable, that are pleasing to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, that are seasoned with salt. Okay. This is the book of Ecclesiastes. Excuse me, Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 32. Verse 8. Let thy speech <clears throat> be short. Comprehending much in few words, be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue. So when we speak with our words seasoned with salt, with the principles of the scriptures, with the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures, we ought to let our speech be short, especially for us younger men in the faith, amongst the older brothers and the elders. We ought to let our speech be short, comprehending much in few words, be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue. The scripture says, Let everything be done decent, decently and in order. If thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. And, with, and when ancient men are in place, use not many words. Okay? 
So let's get the last one, flower of wheat. And we'll conclude the lesson. And then part three, we'll go into honey, milk, and the rest of them. Flower of wheat. This is the book of St. John, chapter 6, verse 51. These are the words of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, written in the red letter. St. John, chapter 6, verse 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And how do we eat of Yahweh Shai? How do we eat the body of Yahweh Shai? By being obedient unto the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. By having faith in Yahweh through his son Yahweh Shai. By following the laws to the to the best of our abilities. By what? Kissing the son, lest he be angry. And the word kiss means a subject. So the Lord is speaking about himself in this verse. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. And a lot of people got offended by that. Oh, he's talking about cannibalism. No, man. It's all spiritual. Because these words are likened unto bread. And what is bread made from? The flour of wheat. Which I will give for the life of the world. And the Lord did give his flesh for the life of the world. By going on that cross for our sakes. So that we may become sons once again and not remain as bastards unto the heavenly father, Yahweh. So through Yahweh shall we have redemption. Through Yahweh shall we shall live forever. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh shall. This is the book of Proverbs, last scripture, chapter 9, verse 5, and we conclude the lesson. 9, verse 5. Come, eat of my bread and drink of my wine, which I have mingled. And this is wisdom speaking, which ultimately goes back to the word of Yahweh through Son Yahweh Shai. And one of Yahweh Shah's title is the word of the Mosai Yahweh. Because Yahweh Shai comes in the volume of the book. It is written of him. And he had just told us in the book of St. John, chapter 6, verse 51, to come, eat of my bread. Eat these scriptures. And the word eat means to study. Study these scriptures and make them a part of your lives. Be, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine. The wine represents this knowledge which I have mingled. So, the principal things of the principal things for the whole use of a man's life all, these, all of these things are Liken first and foremost unto the scriptures. That's why our Lord said what? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the heavenly father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai. Because these, these things upon earth, they decay, but the things in heaven are everlasting. The things upon earth become corrupted and eventually they become dust but the things in heaven they stay pure they stay rich and they're everlasting 
And so with that, I pray this lesson was edifying through the spirit and power of your Hashem Shai. Until the next in part three, I say shalom to thee, like Lord's willing, it was edifying.